my um, takeaways uh, from the last two days are that um, there is a new generation of uh, leaders already active, uh, very active in the country uh, as leaders and emerging leaders both. And um, they play a very uh, critical role uh, in the evolution of society uh, because a society is at a, a moment of disruption where all patterns of organizing have ceased to be functional in the new environments uh, uh, any longer and where new patterns of organizing are not quite there yet. And in this moment, um, new um, ways of operating, but also new partners and new collaborative leadership capacities are necessary. And um, I experienced that firsthand in earlier this week, talking to two ministers uh, and the new government uh, here in Chile. And uh, it was interesting to, to listen to them because they basically shared the same uh, um, judge, uh, which is uh, pretty much what I just said, kind of that transformation is necessary, a transformation that includes a mindset shift, and that includes new ways of operating that are much more citizen-centric rather than, you know, outside from, uh, uh, without participation, or the citizen as recipients kind of from some, of some services or something like that. It really involves them in a much more collaborative manner. Now, uh, who are these citizens, right? And what are kind of organizations you could partner up with uh, in that regard? Well, we had like an amazing subset of 100 leaders uh, here in the room. And uh, what was particularly interesting is that many of them were actually emerging leaders. In other words, they were not connected. They are not the one who are already well connected. They are not the one who are already featured in all the social media and, and respective uh, uh, publications, but they are the up and coming, the next wave of leaders, kind of that was kind of the most visible leaders today that have been coming out of the social sector many of them going into government. Now, uh, these next generation of leaders are stepping in and what they of course need is support, uh, support for further developing the capacities that they already have, but they have not um, occasion to further refine and develop. And that's what we basically did. And a lot has to do really with um, helping them in a confusing and contradictory environment to uh, deal with the integration and the transformation of contradictions and connecting with a diverse group of um, stakeholders and partners and helping to transform the relationships with them from purely transactional or from, from ways that are toxic, like polarized, to ways that are more uh, co-creative. And this capacity starts with inner capacities, right? With, with activating uh, deeper capacities. And um, what I do now, which is just um, talking about it, doesn't help at all. What you really need is methods and tools, that's number one, and number two, you need practice fields. What we did the past two days is to, uh, uh, to prototype these practice fields and prototype ways that are on the one hand very personal, on the other hand very systemic, and ways that allow them to also self-organize because um, if you want to provide at the end of the day um, minimal enabling infrastructures for developing these capacities, it must be light-handed, it can't be something heavy-handed, takes forever, very expensive and so on. They must be to a large degree self-organized, right? And, and adjustable to a very different context that everyone is uh, operating from. So that's what we prototyped. Uh, and that's what we got very interesting data. Uh, uh, and I think one thing we learned here is that um, this whole style of um, the suite of methods and tools that we have been developing at the Presencing Institute over the past few years in which 
social art, social art practices and very personal leadership practices are at the very core of the uh, developmental effort that they have direct access to these people, right? You don't need a, a lot to explain that. You don't need a long lecture why that is necessary. They pretty much get that from the get-go and off they go, right? So there's almost no kind of, so in the, if you use the same tools, let's say a more traditional leadership environment, which we have done a lot, uh, what you tend to see is you didn't really set it up and frame it a lot and kind of, kind of ease people slowly into that and then move into these more deeper forms of learning. But with this group, you know, pretty much none of that was necessary, right? Because they already know, right? You just remind them kind of a very minimal framing and then off we go into these deeper practices. I think that's one of the, of the key learnings and that's what we will together, um, you know, with the, uh, all the co-convening organizations here that have been cohorting this very um, uh, intimate space We'll reflect that tonight and tomorrow and, 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 and figure out what conclusions we can draw from that and how we can evolve such a um, emerging learning infrastructure that isn't really one for a single organization. It's also not just one for one person or the other, but that's really kind of for a whole network uh, and uh, emerging movement of leaders how we uh, can uh, put that together.